All right, everybody, welcome to the uh, DPW Holdings Investor Day. This is something that I uh, wish we were having when the price was a little bit better, but we're not going to focus on price. We're going to focus on value today. The entire presentation today, those of you who are in the audience and those of you who are on the Internet and those of you who will be watching this uh, in the future because it will be up live for one year, uh, there is a safe harbor. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but... When you're watching this or reading this, uh, we expect that you have read the safe harbor statement. Our our uh, our our statements are forward-looking, and uh, for argument's sake, uh, this covers everything we need to cover in terms of safe harbor. Um, the presentations will be done today. Uh, we already had breakfast. Thank you guys for coming. We will be uh, Will and I will talk in the beginning. Then we'll have Bill Corbett from Digital Power Lending. I'll talk about I am and the hotel. Darren and Marty will talk about, along with Jay, talk about digital farms and the opportunity there. Um, Amos will come on and talk about Coolasis and uh, the defense side of the business. We'll have Power Plus. Russ, uh, newly appointed CEO of that division, will be on. Um, then we'll have a special presentation from one of our outside investments in, in Sandstone. Uh, Stefan Jackman came up from uh, Atlanta. He'll be speaking about uh, Alzamend, which is an exciting opportunity for DPW long term. And then uh, Phil Mensa will wrap it up in terms of outside investments. We'll, we'll end it with our largest outside investment and our largest single contract, if you exclude microphase in the Air Force, um, which we'll get into later. And then Will and I will wrap up with some closing remarks. Um, all right, well, we are operating under safe harbor, so I know a lot of times we read this, but please make sure you read the safe harbor statements. Um, you know, our, our, the mission I keep, you know, pounding this is that we buy undervalued assets, disruptive technologies with a global impact. Uh, one of the biggest global impacts, obviously, is the reduction of uh, wastewater and, and uh, chemicals uh, in the space with MTIX is a really big investment for us. Uh, and this is sort of the mantra that I've been under, uh, good or bad. I'm going to have uh, Will chime in a little bit about who he thinks we are, how we got here. We're going to do this together a little bit, the opportunities li uh, that lie. Uh, you heard me privately before we went live that we're a, a, a small private equity venture capital activist firm. We operate as a holding company. Um, we got here because the old digital power that had been traded for about 19, 20 years on the New York Stock Exchange was uh, in danger of being delisted, and we had an opportunity to buy the stake from the former chairman. And how we got to where we are today with multiple divisions of the company is through a, a series of aggressive acquisitions that we thought would make sense. Um, many people probably saw that we uh, took the natural power supply business that made power supplies that were used in the crypto space, and that turned into a, sort of an uncontrollable Bitcoin story, one where we kind of lost control of, of, of uh, that narrative. Um, went from about 2,600 shareholders to about 35,000, um, and so there's somewhat of an untold story about what, what, what DPW Holdings is. Um, there's a lot of opportunity with the company, uh, with the assets they've purchased. We're going to talk about that today in terms of the individual silos, whether it be defense with microphase and Entertech and the opportunities in India, um, or the opportunity for MTIX long-term, the long-term manufacturing contract for MTIX, or our long-term investment there. Um, we're really excited about what we're doing with Alzamend and even though DPW has a very small stake, somewhat unreportable, it's so small, uh, we expect that to expand and get, and get larger over time. It is related party because I control uh, all the men from the preferred. So a lot of times you have to take a lot of extra care when you make related party investments with the independent committees and stuff like that. So it's not as simple as me making an investment as it would be to something that was not affiliated. We were a private company, non-public. You would not value the individual businesses the way they're being valued today. And that's probably the narrative going forward is that there's an extreme amount of opportunity in every silo of the business 
And if you were private, you wouldn't be getting the kind of valuations you are now. We clearly believe that it's very undervalued. Um, Will, do you want to comment on that at all? That Will and I have kind of decided that we would comment from time to time on where we thought value was. Sure. So, candidly, I think there's a disconnect right now if you look at our underlying assets. Uh, take Avalanche or MTX International, for example. You know, here's a company with a market cap of a couple million dollars if you just look at common shares outstanding. But if you look at the opportunity, and if you were to take this to more of a traditional private equity standpoint, um, you would see significantly greater valuations for the actual asset. And of course, that asset is held at DPW, which again, it's, it's really our largest investment. You've got a total of about uh, 14 million invested. Now, not all of that is convertible notes, and not all of it has warrant coverage, but it's a significant asset. We've got about 14 million in it. So yeah, and what other, what other assets did you want to talk about specifically as far as? Well, I think defense, I, is, I think the defense business is, is very undervalued, but I think that you, you hit the main point of the, the theme of the, the conversation. The problem is, is I think the public markets, when they're looking at public companies, they're really focused on earnings. Um, and right now, we're an early stage company in a lot of respects. MTIX is early stage, DPW is in the restructuring mode, uh, DPC is, I should say. Entertech is a recent acquisition, and it takes time to, I guess, digest all of those acquisitions. Um, it, it, that's the biggest issue right now, and it's all recent, and there hasn't been a lot of news, and it's only been, I guess, um, conveyed to a small invest investor group Will, Will and I have this thesis that basically no one's really paying attention to the assets. And so we think that it goes to our next plan in terms of... Un, of, of well, I think they're focusing on the debt. Right. And, and how we realize the, the value of what we have. And some of that will mean that some of the companies inside the portfolio won't be here a year or two from now. Um, whether that means that they're sold or spun out, etc., Everybody probably remembers that we recently said we were going to be doing a deal for Digital Farms in which we'd file a Form 10 and eventually issue a dividend. So that we're going to focus in this conversation about, and towards the end, about what we're going to do to sort of realize that. Can you go to the next slide for us, please? This is, uh, yeah, I was with uh, an analyst this morning for breakfast from uh, a fairly decent mid-sized firm, and he said to me, as we got into the conversation about the financial group, the other bets, and DPW technology, he said if you were a $500 million market cap, if you were a billion dollar market cap, no one would be having the conversation. But you're a $10 million market cap with a few companies in here alone that would be valued at 10 million. So it's, it becomes a much more complicated story to tell when you have such a small market cap. Uh, I'm gonna comment on the, the other bets by saying that Will and I, who run Alton Company, we've been buying stock from DPW, um, and I'll, I'll be using a term called look through, right? But right now, to look through DPW down to the assets, it's actually cheaper for us to make an investment in DPW than it would be to make a direct investment. Um, MTIX International, for example, is not raising money at its current uh, private valuation. So it makes sense for us to be able to buy DPW at Alt. We get more ownership, and from a look-through price, we get to purchase more of these investments at a fraction of what we'd be paying them for them. Um, <coughs> And I'll, I'll lead off with one example, and that is that Digital Power Lending has the same license as On Deck, has the same license as SoFi, um, is expanding its loan portfolio, will eventually build its own balance sheet separate away from DPW Holdings, but consolidated on DPW Holdings. Um, I would argue that that business alone is worth more than all this in terms of current market cap. Um, the MTIX transaction is a very long tail investment. Now, Bill and I have had a lot of debate about how it be funded, and it does need an in, in industrial partner because with 50,000 opportunities for textile plants around the world and 50,000 in China, it's going to be a big rollout. 
And it's going to take 20 years for that disruptive technology to flow through the finishing process with MTI, with, uh, in the textile industry. But that contract alone, done correctly, long term could be $100 million a year in manufacturing for DPW's subsidiary. So we have a very long view. And you couple that with we borrowed a lot of short-term money and we had a lot of short-term investors. Remember I talked about we went from 2,600 investors to 35,000 shareholders. And about, if I, if I got 100 messages, 80 of, them, 80, 80 of them were, you're fat and ugly, Todd. And the other 20, sorry, that was a joke. I am fat and ugly, but that's another story. 80 of them were about Bitcoin. And the other 19, to get us to 99, were about you're fat and ugly and how's Bitcoin. And so... <laughs> We got a very, uh, I'm not saying I didn't appreciate the shareholders were there. A lot of the opportunity to capitalize the company came from them. But the, the thought process was very disjointed about what the assets were going to be. And kind of still today, um, I got a text from a major shareholder who said to me, what is Sandstone and what is I am? And I thought to myself, well, we've, we've owned some of these things for 18 months. So we, this, what we're trying to do with this meeting today is to take our time and kind of explain where we are. Clearly, we're, I'm not putting good money after bad. Will and I believe longer term, and we have had successes over time, that this story will play itself out and provide economic benefit for everybody. But right now, from a look-through basis, it's cheaper to us to buy DPW than it is to buy the, the investments directly. And this is why you see DPW when it gets new cash from alt making additional investment there's a dis, there's a there's a disconnect in the marketplace i can put money from alt to dpw and they can make investments in these other vehicles on a cheaper basis and so therefore it, this cycle continues um, i don't envision us getting smaller i'm giving this vision us getting bigger but i do know that the board and will probably thinks that this is enough for a while <laughs> I can tell you that, that this is probably the portfolio for a while. Any comment there, Will? Well, I think it goes back to what you just said. Uh, if an investor is asking you about IM and Sandstone specifically, it goes to the complexity of our financial statements. Um, the IM transaction, when that was consummated last year, it was disclosed immediately, and it's, in, in, it's all over our 10K and 10Qs. Uh, sandstone diagno not diagnostics, the same thing. They're in there, but you're talking about a company with so many subsidiaries and so much going on, it does make it very confusing for the investors to comprehend, let alone there's not, there's not a lot of information out there yet on some of the other investments, like Avalanche. Right. So it's so, a challenge. So we're open-minded to where things end up um, and what... If the perfect example of this is digital farms. That's the old super crypto. We're diversifying our opportunity here by having a data center investment we hope to close in in March that allows us to change the risk profile of Bitcoin, change the risk profile of mining, align ourselves with two experts in the space that have a stellar record in, in, in data center, allow us to expend to rendering, 5G, they're going to talk about that today, while still being able to turn on those miners when we can and turn them off when we need to. And uh, Marty has negotiated a really stellar long-term uh, contract for power, which brings our power costs down. Now, I know there's a debate with in terms of impacted costs, like actual cost. I'm sure Marty would say, well, what's your actual cost? But we, we, we're going to spend 4.7 cents a kilowatt hour uh, to mine Bitcoin, and that's substantially down by half, more than half of what we pay already. Um, and then, of course, this facility uh, is remarkable. So there's a lot of undervalued assets here. I continue, Will and I continue to put our money where our mouth is by buying more. And I've said, I think publicly a hundred times, I'm going to buy more. Um, I beat that into the ground because I don't want anyone to be surprised that I'm going to buy more DPW. Alton Company is going to buy more DPW. This is the current structure of DPW. Um, what you don't see up here is the hotel. Um, what you do see up here is two distinct categories, DPW Technology Group, which 
is made up of Amos and Russ. Um, Amos runs, you know, has it, well, let's be clear, Amos has been here for more than a decade, so he has significant influence on uh, di the old Digital Power Corp, uh, Power Plus, the acquisition. Amos has really a, been around a long time and knows the space very well. Russ um, is now running Power Plus Electronics, where we're, we're going to build distribution there. Um, cool Assist has Gresham Power, Microphase, and Entertech. A lot of opportunity in, in India with it, Entertech. Uh, expansion of manufacturing uh, on the defense side. Um, microphase is being right-sized. We've had a we had a new uh, hire in David Katzoff, who's being is really instrumental in helping us clean up microphase uh, to 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 right-size the business. And then over on digital uh, DPW Financial, we have uh, Billy Corbett running uh, digital power lending, uh, Darren Mago running digital farms with Marty and Jay, and then uh, I am Hospitality run by Kraus. The restaurant group. I'll cover this later. I can I can see that restaurant group being spun out to shareholders. In fact, I would argue that it's very likely because they want to grow that they don't meet the same criteria as to where we would want them to be in terms of uh, does the story make sense. Um, so I think you could look for for the the restaurant group to later on be part of a different business and look for DPW to monetize. One of the things you're going to hear from Will today is that we want to bring down our short-term borrowing to zero and want to lengthen out uh, our borrowing to match our long-term assets. These are our shots on goal. Every one of these shots on goal to me represents an opportunity for value to be created by one or two of these shots going in the goal. Um, we're going to be talking about lending, defense, <coughs> blockchain, biotech, hospitality, power solutions, and advanced textiles. And this is sort of the theme that when you own digital power, you got a lot of shots on goal. Um, we may not all agree on how we should get there, but we, we do have a path uh, that we, we'd like to sort of lay out. With that in mind, I'm going to bring up, uh, I think the first speaker is Billy Corbett. This is the leadership team. Uh, myself, Will Horn, Darren Mago, Ken Cragen, a recent hire in the last five months as Chief Accounting Officer. David Katzoff, which is in the uh, audience. David, could you raise your hand? Um, uh, Joe Spaziano, our Chief Technology Officer, a lot of people know him as Crypto Joe. This was critical. Um, the new hires is probably a, a little unusual to like seg segment the way it is, but believe it or not, all of these companies were handled by Will and one other person. And I sort of begged for Will to build a bigger back office. Um, and now that we have uh, Ken Craig and our Chief Accounting Officer, He's also the CFO of Alzheimer now. Will is no longer the CFO. David Katzoff is Senior Vice President of Finance, and he is the CFO of Digital Farms. And Georgia is our controller. This has been instrumental in us helping um, us figure out how we'll be able to monetize assets, get reporting a little tighter, ease up things for Will so he can get all the companies properly reporting. Some of them are voluntary. And for us to take on greater responsibility in terms of monetizing value. David Katzoff, um, Ken, and Georgia have been instrumental. David has turned the holding company into really a, um, as some of the people that work with me, especially my assistants, would say, this is getting very corporate, is what they say to me. But uh, it's very welcomed. We're getting a lot more disciplined having David there. Um, so we're pleased about uh, these new hires.